Hello there and welcome back to Field Study, an exploration of food and the landscape. So today I'm here in this beautiful ivy strewn woodland and I'm going to introduce you guys to a plant that you may not have come across before or you may have even stepped over it without even noticing it was there. Now this plant's way of life some of you might find surprising and it's definitely one of the most intriguing species in my opinion that we have here in the UK. Now the plant that I'm talking about is called Ivy Broom Rape or Orobunk hederaceae. You'll find it on woodland floors up and down the country wherever there is ivy making its way between the trees. It's recognised by these squat upright stalks and this beautiful wine red coloration. Now this lovely deep red coloration is a little bit of a hint as to how this plant lives. Uh, so it hasn't developed or evolved chlorophyll, which means that it lacks the ability to photosynthesize. Now you may be asking yourself, how does this plant get nutrients? Um, how does it get its sustenance in order to survive? Uh, and the answer might just shock you. It's like something out of a, a science fiction. Um, and that is because this is a parasitic plant. Now the orobunks, the broom rapes, uh, this genus of plants are parasitic on other plants. Now this one, the ivy broom rape, is parasitic on ivy. So when the seed drops, it will wait until it senses an ivy plant nearby before latching onto it and then growing from it. Now over the course of its lifetime, it will take all of the, uh, the nutrients and the energy that it needs from the ivy, from its host plant. So it's sort of like latching onto this vast network of solar panels so it can do its thing of flowering and going to seed. Um, and that is absolutely fascinating. Uh, in my opinion. Now the family of plants that this is in, its wider family or genus, the Orobunks, um, have got many interesting species in. Uh, in parts of Italy there's a Orobunk called the Bean Orobunk which um, parasitizes bean plants um, and that is actually eaten as a foodstuff. Uh, you can find lots of recipes for it online, which is very intriguing. Whilst I've never found anything in my literature about the edibility of this specific species, the ivy broom rape that we have here in the UK, um, it is mentioned in herbals for medicinal uses. Uh, in Culpepper's herbal, he mentions it for, I think it's uh, kidney and bladder stones. And there's another reference somewhere to a folklore remedy being made uh, for insertion up the, uh, up the old rear end. Um, can't remember what that was to treat. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it, so it didn't really stick in my brain. Um, <laughs> There are also references to this being a medicinal plant all the way across Northern Europe and into parts of Russia. Um, but I have never read anything on its toxicity or its chemical makeup from a scientific resource. Um, so I would not recommend going out there and eating or using this as a medicinal plant without doing some further research first. But it is interesting just finding out about the human relationship with plants that are somewhat overlooked in other parts of the UK, this is actually considered a rare plant, I believe. Uh, but down here on this part of the Isle of Wight that I live on, where we've got these beautiful stretches of woodland that are knitted together with ivy, its host plant, um, we, we get it quite frequently. And if you walk the coastal path, you'll definitely probably see it. I have found brilliant specimens of this plant uh, down in the West Country as well. So uh, down towards South Devon on this sort of undercliff habitat, this sort of south facing woodland that's got lots of ivy as its understory. I found quite a lot of this plant um, and I think it is absolutely beautiful, especially if you get up close to it, get to know it, uh, get a hand lens out, look at the intricacies of those flowers on the flowering stalk. Um, one of the beautiful things about this plant is as soon as it is flowered and gone to seed, you will not know it's there for the rest of the year. It's much like a fungi in that respect. Um, and the purple coloration goes over to sort of like a, a brown color um, relatively quickly. So to observe its beauty, you've got a very short window and I think there's something beautiful in that as well. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed this brief look into what I think is one of the most intriguing plant species that we have here in the UK. 
I encourage you to go out and try and find it for yourself and get up close with a hand lens and have a good old look at it uh, before the season goes over and it disappears for another year. Um, it really is worth it. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and uh, hit subscribe for more plant and foraging videos from this beautiful landscape. If you want to support the channel, there's also a merch shelf underneath where you can get foraging bags and uh, shirts and stuff like that. Right, until next week, take care.